Unlock your true potential with the Leadership Community, where we empower men to embrace self-awareness and authenticity. Introducing the Leadership Community, where we believe in helping men become the best version of themselves. It all starts with self-awareness, and we encourage men to take a step back, pause, and reflect on their thoughts, emotions, and behavior. Embrace their authenticity and break free from societal expectations. Here are just a few testimonies from individuals. Leadership helped me develop self-awareness and embrace my authentic self. And now I feel more confident and fulfilled. Question, are you ready to unlock your potential? If so, join the leadership community today. Good morning, my friend. Hey. So this is, uh, I hate to be the guinea, you had to be the guinea pig, but I couldn't help it. It's out of schedule. So you, I have like a half a dozen podcasts lined up now, but this is the first time I'm recording in my new place. So, um, <laughs> but even the environment I'm not comfortable with, so no. see if everything works. I'm glad it's on your end. Uh, that is all jacked up. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Well, um, I'm. I upgraded this week to the Roadcaster um, Duo. Um, and so I've been playing with it, trying to make sure I got it all set up. I thought yeah, it was look, good. There's me back there. With a, that's an old one. Uh, the Detroit Red Wing pad on. Okay. I used to change outfits every time, depending on the guest. Now I just um, I just wear the same thing every single time. I love it, though. I thought it's I easy, it. and then it brands easier. You know, yeah, on social media. No, I love it. I love what you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna get this thing started. I know you got some other things to do. Um, I hope this recording comes out. Uh, so, do you? This is video, but I've only heard audio. Where's your video? Uh, you'll find it on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't look it up. Yeah, you found it on YouTube. So, um, and do you, you just kind of do an interview, then you, I, I listened to a few in the background when I was doing other stuff, and it sounded like you, do you take them and just kind of like um, narrate around them later, kind of take what you want, edit it up, or what is it like straight through? Um, but it's a, it's a slight editing going on, but not much. Yeah. Um, we really kind of just take what the raw footage and, and rock with that. Yeah. Um, if right. I if I'm if I'm editing anything, it's probably because I'm I'm using these arms trying to get away from that <laughs> and the pa the long pauses that type of stuff. So yeah, I I, I realized I had been podcasting by accident. I had been doing videos for a while, which I be honest, I prefer podcasting over videos, but because this world is a is uh fixated on social media um just having a having a video has been an important um instrument as far as just trying to get this uh get my message out really it's all about empowering men helping men take charge of their life overcome yeah. some of their limiting beliefs walk out their god-given purpose um, through self-awareness and becoming an authentic them i think sometimes we live we live in this facade we say one thing, but our actions do something totally different. And because of that, we're not often authentically who we are. And it shows up in our life. It shows up in different areas of our life. And we don't understand why we not why why the results are the way they are. I think it's because we lack we lack authenticity. You know, sure. so. so I'm gonna get this thing started. Thank you, my friend, for taking time for me. Thanks for inviting me. So, all right, fellas, we got a phenomenal guest for you today. We have my man, Ken McMullen, um, the founder of Becoming Outlaws podcast. Ken is a Christian broadcaster, professor in biblical studies, a church leader, a, biblical te a Bible teacher, um, and again, uh, a phenomenal host of the Be Becoming Outlaws podcast. Ken, welcome in. 
to the Leadership Podcast. Thank you. This is fun. Thanks for inviting me. I'm right, always up for talking. You. You're always up for talking? I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read your, uh, your you, you're familiar with the DISC assessment, so you're a high eye. I love interacting yeah. with people and talking and conversating. That's right. That's good. Yeah. Those, those assessments are very handy. Um, I just... But uh, I never fit quite in a box, though. So some people would tell you I'm very introverted in certain social settings, but yet I'll do podcasts and speak in front of lots of people. And, you know, it's um, everyone's different. Everyone's different. Well, listen, t- t- tell the guys a little bit more about Ken, how Ken likes to serve, um, and what's, what's most important to, to you. Uh, what's most important to me is um, yeah, that's changed since I've been older. So when I was younger, young being like teenage years, um, I was very driven to ministry. And really, most important thing to me, well, I loved music. A lot of teenagers do. I felt like music was my life. and But I also felt like ministry was 100% where I was going. And that I just felt the burning desire. Uh, Even though I was kind of shy, I didn't like being in front of people or necessarily talking to more than one person at a time. But I found uh, scripture fascinating and able to interpret it well and explain it to people pretty well. So I was always leading Bible studies since I can remember. But as far as like a, a career and a passion and what I like, it was always geared towards ministry in some way. And since I liked music because I was younger, um, I got into Christian radio and, uh, and television. That's kind of what I was doing. And through life circumstance, fast forward to several, several decades, you do family, life changes, needs changes, priorities change. And, and something like this would have been great uh, before Al Gore invented the Internet. Or maybe he did. I just didn't know yet. And it wasn't really, you know, it was more like a novelty than a functional use where when life hits and you have things in your life you didn't expect with uh, maybe marriage relationships and kids and uh, jobs or job loss, it, it was so important, and it is, to be like in a men's group and have men's support. And I never did because I was too busy taking care of those things myself on a day-to-day basis. I'm just get up and take care of stuff. And you didn't have the internet or like, or I knew of coaches like you or resources I could listen to online and subscribe to YouTubes that would encourage men or just leadership skills and how to navigate your life. Because even if you think you're doing your best, like I thought I was as far as being, let's say, a, a husband and a dad and an employee, you can lose track of what I initially felt ministry. And some people do ministry, then they sacrifice their family. and then. That's bad, too. So you have to have something that helps you and grounds you with other people kind of going through the same thing or or some various forms of life together, especially a men's group. It didn't have that. Um, So as a 50 plus year old person now, you know, I have a lot of shoulda, woulda, couldas, but I sure wish I had something like this back then. And a long answer to your question is that was my beginning. And then all life happened. And then I've circled back to this basically because it's still my passion. I I think you're just who you are. God created everybody different. And I used to say, uh, Amy Grant's late is coming up, baby, baby, you you know, whatever, for 15 seconds and go off. But at the same time, I was always studying seminary because it just wasn't enough for me. So with this podcast outlet, everyone and their mother is doing a podcast. So that can be discouraging. But at the same time, I've always had this broadcast element in me and a thirst for scripture and um, a, and, and, and I think a, a pretty good angle to interpret and explain it to people. And so to have conversations um, with people even smarter than myself as a platform, one person listens or, if, you know, millions listen, you got to do what you're called to do. Um, and that's and that's how you measure success. I think that's where I'm at. Man, no, that's good. Phenomenal there. Um, and, and I agree a hundredfold. I was listening as you spoke, and he almost seemed like you uh, you dissected some things and layers in me, my life, that I, 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 re- I resonate with. You know, um, I'll be honest. Um, what I'm doing today, what I shared with you earlier, is 
um, I, I, I kind of stumbled on podcasting. Didn't even realize I was doing. I just was doing social media feeds, right? A bunch of social media videos. And before long, I realized um, the passion for me was being able to connect with people, um, being able to talk to people. Oftentimes when I'm doing videos, I'm typically by myself. And being able to have a guest such as yourself to come and add, offer so much insight and impact to the, uh, a larger audience, uh, man, is where I found myself. So this, this broadcasting piece for you, um, it's just been, it's been enabled in you from, from, from the beginning, right? So you just kind of flow with this thing so, yeah. so, uh, so easy. Um, so becoming outlaws podcast yeah unpack that for me because i think that's yeah. a beautiful thing yeah thanks uh even my own mother a good christian woman said what is this becoming outlaws outlaws that's a negative connotation is that what you want to put in the world you know kind of thing and um depends how you term outlaw so i take the verse uh luke twenty three thirty seven. Which has, you know, we have all different interpretations, uh, of interpretations, uh, translations, I should say, of Scripture. But one that says he was numbered among the transgressors um, can be interpreted, uh, he was numbered among the outlaws. So, uh, talking about uh, Jesus, of course. So, when I say becoming an outlaw, it's really a way of saying becoming Christian. So I start every program now saying uh, becoming outlaws, talk to celebrities, scholars, diverse voices, uh, answering um, oh, on topics about following Jesus, defying societal norms, and asking uh, profound questions of faith. So anyone who's a spiritual outlaw is someone who's willing to go against the grain and Becoming a Christian, you automatically have stepped out of a kingdom of darkness into a kingdom of light, out of the social um, norm of society. And if you're being led by the Spirit, you are being led in an opposite way in direction than the rest of society and the way they think and the way they're going. And that is an outlaw. And um, that's what they wanted to kill Jesus for. Of course, Jesus didn't sin. He didn't do anything wrong. But even to the religious people of his day, he was considered an outlaw that needed to be captured. He lived in hiding most evenings at near the end and um, and was killed with criminals. And uh, so he is was the most notorious outlaw of all time. And when you become a Christian, you are headed in that in that direction that um you just automatically are, are on, on the outs. You associate automatically with it being an outlaw. I love it. Yeah. Um, Luke twenty two thirty seven becoming outlaws. Um, um, geez, I really like that. Um, so, so tell me, unpack that for me too. Um, connecting with scholars, celebrities. Um, we and I and I heard I read this on your webpage. Um, and that was we 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 want to address the elephant in the room type thing. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't have, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, um, sometimes being rogue is not good, but I'm not associated. I have, I'm not even up to date on it, but you're talking about my website. So I have a page on there that says like friends of, and it'll say maybe some churches and organizations that really enjoy, you know, maybe I'll, if you still like me after this, I'll add yours onto it. People that like what I'm doing and they support it, but I don't have an allegiance with any particular organization, denomination, or church. Reason being so that I can have diverse voices on. Um, unfortunately, you know, I get YouTube comments and social media comments who don't really listen closely to the program, but the way I present the program, the kind of guests or topics I have. Are you even a Christian? Um, you wouldn't have had that person on if if you were a Christian, and I get, but that's why I'm out. I'm so tired of. Um, I'm not interested in entertaining the Christian culture. I'm trying to strengthen believers who are interested in thinking outside of, um, within Scripture, outside of maybe how they expand what they've thought before, and it's an outreach for me. So I have a lot of people from different religions, a ton of New Age people. Um, 
they hear fairness, I think is why they listen. Because I have people on, I used to call this uh, Becoming Outlaw Stories of Divine Encounters. And it primarily was, let's say, a former medium or psychic who became a Christian. And I still do that. A former uh, atheist who became a Christian and all these people out of cults who become a Christian. They're becoming outlaws. And um, however, I try to do it in a respectful way because sinners are sinners and lost people aren't lost on purpose most of the mm-hmm. time. And if you're in a, a belief system or a religion that's antichrist, you think you're going to heaven and you're probably not. And I care for them and I want to reach them. And I think a lot of them feel the sincerity without the judgment, but the truth is given. Yes. And I can't get that, honestly, when I'm back to a denomination of sorts. I'm locked into the conversations they would want me to have in the way they would present it. Wow. That's beautiful. That's powerful, too, because you, you, you really uh, you give exposure to it and you allow people. And, I think, and, and what I, I kind of see I, when you was uh, describing that, I kind of saw that in how Jesus led. You know, he didn't didn't condemn um, the Pharisees for what they thought or what they believed. He just, you know, he he had he was open to have the conversation um, to allow you to believe how you desire, but give you the truth. Yeah. You know, and and it's that truth that I think that uh, that makes the impact, because when you you, when you leave and you settle with the truth, you're like, man, okay, hold on. This gave me a different perspective here. Yeah. You know, I I got a fresh outlook. So, um, yeah, it, it really resonates with the, the outlaw theme uh, and what you're doing. Um, I think you're doing phenomenal work, brother. Um, so don't stop. Um, I really enjoy your podcast. Thank you. So your future is today. I know yeah. we've been trying to catch up and, and, and connect, and we, it's, been the, it's been the hit or miss with uh, your move, my car accident, but we are here. Right, Kim. How do we how do we help men take a fresh perspective when leading their future? Yeah. So this is, is to say your future is today sounds like you're just you know trying to be cute or smart and um, trying to come up with some little cute nugget, but really this is life changing. The simplicity of it is life altering. Meaning, I think some of the most powerful philosophical things you can find, even the gospel, is so simple, a child grasps it, even though there's depths of layers to it that we have yet to figure out. But the the cover of it is so simple. And to say that our future is today, I think of it in terms as today is yesterday's future that we are worried about. (laughs) <laughs> there never is a future. So I'm actually making it complicated. I just said it was easy. Scripture does say make plans. But Scripture also says God laughs at our plans and scoffs at them because he determines the steps. And he never promises us. He promises a good future, but it doesn't say his mercies are renewed tomorrow or he's going to help us tomorrow or salvation is tomorrow. Um, It's always today. And it begins obvious when you put those scriptures together. It's almost overlooked. But I figured this out when I was trying to figure out what's the will of God for my life. And I came down to the same thing. The will of God for your life is, there's different scriptures as the will of God is to do his commandments and things. But in general, it is to live today and to ask today for your daily bread. You don't get daily bread tomorrow. You know, even in scripture, an example in the Old Testament is that when the Israelites were grumbling and asking for food, God sent manna. But if you took manna from the day before, it rotted. Mm -hmm. You could only get it today. And if you took double, so you had some for tomorrow, tomorrow's rotted. You only had today's provisions, and it only lasted for today. 
but it got you to where you were going to the promised land in the future, but you weren't to worry about that. You just followed, you ate the food given today, and you followed wherever that fire or cloud went today. You don't worry about where it goes tomorrow. You just follow today. And then you add, it all comes together where Jesus refers to it and says, you know, daily defeat on the word of God. But he says, I am the bread of life. I am the manna from heaven. If we focus on him, and not just, here's a mistake that I see in a Christian life is all in. So we encourage Bible study and scripture reading and all this. Very good. But that becomes our religion without living it. So we got to feed on it every day so we can get through the day. Not just so we have more knowledge, but put it into practice that day. So we feed on the bread of life every day. We ask for our sustenance every day. We make plans. But when they come or don't come the way we thought, we let it ride. Because we're not controlling where the cloud or the fire goes. We just follow the Spirit. And we're going to end up probably not where we thought we were, but where we're supposed to be. Come on. <laughs> I love that. You, you, bring this, you bring the mind, and I shared this scripture this morning uh, in my men's morning devotion. And that was Jeremiah 17, 7, where uh, Jeremiah writes, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. You know. Um, that daily um, bread um, each day is for today. We have to trust yeah. God now and not try to take control or relinquish or, or, or snatch back control from God and try to do it our own way each day. I mean, I like, I like how you used it too. You, you gave the example of Egypt. Egypt I mean, I'm sorry, um, Israel leaving Egypt and they had to, uh, they had to depend on God for the manna daily. You know. Yeah, I actually wrote it down um, to make sure I got it right. I mean, listen to this. Uh, so in Exodus 16, uh, the Lord says to Moses, I'll rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough food for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. And then, you know, elsewhere, it just says day before, day after manna, rot. They couldn't eat it if they wanted to. Right. Um, you know, and I also put that in a bigger picture where the Old Testament says that, uh, the Psalm, Psalms 139, that every day of our life, <clears throat> excuse me, was written in a book uh, while we were still in the womb. And I think about that because once again, we get the day. So every day of our life, which is what we're talking about, and each day leads to our, quote, future. But how do we go to our future? We just live today. Today's yesterday's future. We never have a future. We're always in it. We're in yesterday's future. Tomorrow will be today's future. That's good. But every one of those days is already predetermined. Some people take that as, well, and then God has us do evil because our life was a mess. That's not the point. Is every day has been, if you think of it as a book, which it said it's a book, so a book has all these pages, and when you're reading it, you don't really know what's in the next chapter. You think you know where it's going. You've got a general idea. You know ultimately how it's going to have a happy ending, but you don't know the twists and the turns and the exact ending of your life or the book. All we can do is read today's chapter or, uh, excuse me, page. And every day is a page. And then maybe a few years or whatever, a season of our life ends up being a chapter of our life. And some of our are going to have good chapters or bad chapters. It's the drama of life. But we're promised it all works out for the good in the end. But we can't know any time we've seen God's hand in our life. It's never in advance. It's when we look back at the chapters of our life, as bad as some of them were, and we say, man, God was in there the whole time. Why couldn't I see that? What we got to do is learn not only that lesson, but that that's the way life is. It's a book. We live a page at a time, and Scripture calls a page a day. Today is the day of salvation. When you hear his voice, today, don't harden your hearts. He's not speaking to us yesterday or tomorrow. He guides us today. And 
our minds always think about the future. Um, and that when, when next time he'll speak to us or the next time he tells us what to do or directs us what to do, that's when we'll do it. Today, here's my day. It could change. I've cleaned the kitchen today. Pretty exciting. I'm talking to you today. My son's turning 20 this weekend. We have a birthday party. I'm going to host family today. That's all God's will. And I'm going to do the best I can to be a host, to be a dad, to get the kitchen clean, to talk to you. And ultimately, I'm going to live another day that's a little similar, a little little similar, just seems another day and a little similar. I look back in a couple years and it had brought me either to a better relationship with my family on how I work this day or worse. Or if I didn't come on your podcast, or I did, when the opportunity came, or uh, your day matters. All those little things matter, and it leads to who you are and what your life is in the future, and all those around you. My son's relationship with me and his family is based on what I do today. Ultimately, when all the days get added up and the chapters of your life begin to turn. That's great. That's impactful. Very impactful. Very impactful. Very, very impactful. I think that uh, we, we, we are, we challenged. We're challenged in this place of relinqu relinquishing control um, and letting go and getting to a place to tr trust God um, to lead us. Man, each day, each day is a blessing, and I and I like you say today. I'm celebrating. I'm celeb We celebrating my my son's birthday, and that's that's my focus. We're gonna get around some friends. So shout out to your son. Happy birthday to your son. Um, grateful. Twenty years, man. I got a twenty year old too, brother. Um, so talk to me. What's some of the challenges that? I mean, I mean, we can talk. There's a lot of challenges here, but what's the challenge? One particular challenge you think that men are facing? when it comes to, to trusting uh, God and, and when it comes to leading their future. Yeah. Um, I don't know who said it, but I, it's in my head, and I know it came from somewhere, and I know it's sadly true, is that most men live their lives in quiet, like, desperation. And... Um, it's probably a bad analogy to say that everyone looks happy on Facebook and uh, it's not real life in that everyone struggles and that if a man or a person, but a man who has the responsibility of um, providing and being a, a husband or a, a dad or an employee or whatever it is, there's also this innate inside of us we're all made different if we found christ or not if you haven't there's an innate yearning to find him even if you don't know what that is if you have found him every one of us has purpose we have something to give the world and a lot of that has to do with the relationships in our offspring and our relation, you know, what we provide and give uh, to those around us in life. And maybe that's the majority. But there's something in most of us that there's something else I have to offer. There's something I can do. And people that are, you know, successful in their job are people who usually found that and they're, and they're living it. And if not, you live out, and I've lived most of my adult life this way, um, you live out the responsibility in front of you, because that's what a man does, or that's even what a Christian man does. But there's an, a, a quiet unhappiness that something is not fulfilling. And other men will find that in um, extra relationships that are improper, They'll find it too much into sports or into gambling. I mean, they'll find something to try to like fill this earning that their normal life isn't getting, or maybe even too much church where it's just like going to church and being involved in everything, trying to get this feeling of fulfillment. When the thing is, uh, I'm trying to say it without being trite, is like we've been trained to have employment 
which is very important, but not deployment. Like, what do you have to give the world? And maybe the job is the outlet for that, for those that are very fortunate. Um, but there's something that each one of us is made different. If a snowflake, every snowflake is made differently, and they are the way they fall, not everyone is random. Uh, everyone has different fingerprints. We all have a little different DNA. We have different personalities. And God has given everyone something that if you're not, didn't find it and doing it, there's something aching. And I think the first step men have to do, you can love your children, find fulfillment in your family, but there's something unique about you that's different than everybody. People find it in music. Um, I have to discuss scripture. Not everybody has that feeling. There's something in me since I was a teenager that needs to understand at a deeper level um, the theological issues. That's not everybody. And I've had this thing in me with like broadcasting. Well, most of my adult life, it had to go away because of my life experiences and uh, challenges and responsibilities. Well, this is the season in my life, and, and perhaps it was, or the chapter in my life where I, I need to stop and take care of this, this, and this, and I just can't do. But I think looking back, if I had to do it over again, you got to find a way. Some people call it self-care. Well, make sure you stay in shape. Make sure you uh, do a hobby, learn to play guitar, or something other than just your responsibilities so you don't burn out on life. But I think it's deeper than that. Not just a hobby. Find out what's different about you. Yeah. With your job or not your job. No, that's good. Uh, enhance it and deploy it into the world. And that's real good. It, and it sounds like you're talking. Um, it's it's more it's more than just uh, your job. This is purpose. Um, this purpose. is this is where fulfillment is fi- found. And I think some I think the one of the biggest disconnects is that oftentimes we relate our jobs to what what we believe is our purpose. Um, I think your your job is was simply designed to provide for you. This is how God showed up in your life for provision. Well, let's say that's one area that God showed up in in your life for for vision. But there's still an ache, there's still a calling, there's still a passion and drive to do something more. And to your point, for you, it's broadcasting. Not just broadcasting, but um, unpacking the scripture, really, really deep diving in and understanding what God has to say about you to you. In so many words, that's how I sum it up, right? Um, And I love that because it's that innate thing that really makes you special. And I think that we, we really don't tap into it. It's, that's probably one of the hardest things to, to find in ourselves. While it may come through self-awareness, yeah, it may come through self-care, um, all of those things. But there's something, and to your point, and I, and I, can, I think I can, even, I can attest to this to even for myself. Um, one of, one of my passion is men, but what's my real focus on men? You know, um, I work with formerly incarcerated men. You know, I work with those in recovery. Um, I work with m- men in the church. And I believe that God just called me to this place where, to, to really help men um, grow spiritually. You know, how do I? And so I think that's that, that's that purpose feel, that innate peace that you keep drawing back to. Because yeah. I keep finding myself drawing back to it, you know. And many people have similar to you or similar to me. So I would leave Bible studies. I've never, ever, a one-on-one or to thousands of people, or anywhere between, turned down if somebody said, can you explain scripture? Could you teach something? Because you have a responsibility. Given much, little, or much is given, much is required. But, I, so I've always, almost always, led Bible studies or some kind of groups or whatever. And it was good. But there's something deeper that's not for everybody that I feel the need to be outside church walls. Uh, Because at some point, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, or there's other people that can, or other men that can do what I'm doing, but not everybody can do this. Um, You know what I mean? You got to find what that is that not everybody can do. Yeah. Everyone has something. And even if, you know, you're talking about job and purpose, 
it can be one and the same. If you own a lawn care company or whatever, and you do great, and that's great employment. It could be that you end up putting into your plan that you have a certain amount of elderly people's lawns you mow, or you find a purpose in your employment. You deploy something in you that you don't feel fulfilled until you do it. And it always involves helping somebody else. Hey, Dwayne, I didn't interrupt you because you're probably recording fine, but ever since I last spoke, I, I didn't, couldn't hear you at all. There's no volume. Oh, my gosh. Can you hear me now? You, you just came back. So in my experience, you probably were recorded fine. I just couldn't hear you because of a lag in internet or something. So I didn't say anything, but uh, I hear you now. Okay. Did you hear that question? You didn't hear the question. I didn't hear anything. Okay. I was trying um, to read your lips. I couldn't do it. No, no. I appreciate it. Um. So my question was, um, I want to close this. I want to get ready to close this thing out. Um, but I heard you say early in the conversation that you wish you had this platform or you wish you, you were able to engage more in a community aspect. Um, speak more to that um, and how you think uh, men can benefit from being, being connected with like-minded men and, and growing in communities and service to others. Yeah. Um... I think it's essential. Um, I am not a social butterfly. Uh, it's I'm not drawn to men's groups naturally. Um, I And maybe some of it has been pride over the years where I know scripture, I know God. Uh, they're not going to teach me anything I don't know. Um, I have to sit there and pretend I don't know a lot about the Bible, not to like offend the person leading. I don't know. I just had all these excuses in time. But honestly, in more recent years, I've engaged in men's groups, um, sadly, because I needed it. I would have lost a job, uh, frankly, lost a relationship, um, nothing else, no place else to go. And I'll show up on some Saturday morning in a men's group and sit there like now, you know, like, like this, you know, <laughs> hat down that, uh, just to be there. But I tell you, <clears throat> I mean, I'm in a better place now, but every man should be involved in a men's group that is solid, that is there and cares about them and has a humble leader that is Bible-based and is not judgmental. It's easy to sit there and grab a Bible and to point out scriptures and make you feel even worse. But if there's guys that can be honest and just honestly say what they're feeling with no judgment, most can't get that at home or at their job. or And they're living, like I said, quiet desperate lives because they don't want to complain or hurt their loved one that they're just hurting on the inside. But most men are. Yeah. And most men haven't found their purpose or able to balance their family life and even think about taking care of themselves with self-care or purpose driven. They're just trying to survive day to day. And I think mentally uh, and spiritually, it, it's essential. And um, I should be involved more. I'm involved a little, but I, it'll always be a part of my life uh, now. 
that's good. Man. So um, do, do you bring your insight? Um, because I know you said some, one reason you, you probably might have stayed away was because but what else are they going to tell me? Today, as you involve and interact, do you bring your insight? And, and what's that? What, has it been received? Yeah. Well, when I sit in a men's group, I'm not um, uh, the becoming outlaws guy. Right. I'm just, I, bl- I blend in the best I can. And I let the leader lead. Oh, that's, that's but if I, phenomenal leadership if I, right there. Yeah. You know, yeah. So to finish that, I let the leader lead. I don't hide in sight if I feel like there's something extra of value I could add and nobody's adding it. I'll add, but I sure don't take over and I let that person do what his calling is. Um, what I'd like to add to that is what I'm doing now um, with a podcast. I probably wouldn't have been good at it in my younger years, even when I was, I thought, in my prime of broadcasting, because listening is one of the hardest skills uh, there is. And I finally have learned it. Uh, most of my early podcasts, I got criticized by people listening. They're like, we, we don't want to hear you talk. I would just like hear people's stories and let them say the whole thing. So I've integrated myself to a degree, but I've learned that everyone has something to say that I can learn from and other people can learn from. And we can all learn from each other. I can learn from you know someone who just got saved yesterday or a young buck just who comes to my work and just got employed. It's a different generation. And they can learn from me if they have the humility. And I think we all just need humility and we can learn from each other. And in a men's group, the last one I was at recently, I was so amazed. It was a Saturday morning, like a dozen guys. But there were like college kids and then all the way up to retired pastor and retired guys there. And they were respecting and listening to each other. Because nobody has a perfect angle in life. You know, yeah, that's good. That's real good. No perfect angles. So perfect angles, all in scripture, <laughs> and we all can get different insights and share it with each other. Man, I love that. That's real good. All right, my man. Ken, close us out. Give share it with the guys because I heard you say something. You creep. You you slid this one in, but I think we need help here. One thing we don't do well is listen. Give, give yeah. me in three um, close out tips for listening. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit of stats. These aren't exact, but they're pretty close. Is um, over 90%, at least 90% of our communication um, is nonverbal. So we know that when we're talking to people, well, one, when we're not talking to people, uh, do their actions are speaking words, right? Like if somebody's not texting you back, they text you back if they want to be with you or communicate with you, no matter what you think about that. People do what they want to do. But in a, in, in a conversation here, uh, this long form format is really difficult because it takes, people want to have to listen because you have to listen to what's going on. But if we're talking and I can see you, I'm going to forget um, over 75% of everything you said to me and only even retain to begin with about 10% of it. But so it's body language, but factor this in when you're talking to somebody. To actually be curious and interested in somebody's life and realize that they're a creation of God and they're living out a path and it's been different than yours and they have a life you never lived uh, and you can learn something from them no matter who they are. And when you do, intentionally listen to what they're saying and not think about how you're going to reply. And you can make that 90% go to 50 or 55 because 35 to 38% of hearing is in someone's tone. So if someone is telling you something, you're only getting about 10% of it. But if they sound sad, if they sound stressed, if they sound arrogant, or if they sound like they have anxiety or they're at their brim of patience, or if they sound like they have love in their words, all these things are speaking more than their words. And you can hear that and read that from people, and they're doing the same for you. Wow. Um, yeah, so we can, 
that was a long answer. It should have been a short one. No, but it's easy to say to listen bro. to people. But it's to listen to people without just waiting for your turn to give your opinion. Be willing to have no opinion. That's true. And especially if somebody's hurting and just needs to vent. We just need to learn to listen and realize our facial expressions, our tonality back is speaking volumes to them if we care. We can say, I love you, Jesus loves you, and it be cold, and they don't feel that or believe you at all. We can say nothing. Um, you know, I've learned, like, what do you say at funerals when somebody dies? You don't have to say anything. You just be there, for instance, or you say, I'm sorry. And they can hear and sense from you if you really are. And you have to, and people prepare in their mind, I don't want to go, I don't know what to say. And, and they come off as insincere. And um, people will always, I don't know if you've had, I've had very close people to me die. And I don't mean it. I don't hold grudges. But I can remember people talking about the latest movie, like, before a funeral. or And then come and tell me they're very sorry. And it's just, what? And then I have people that had said nothing. They just came and gave me a hug and didn't take any more of my time. And I'll never forget that. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. That's real powerful. The power of listening. Man, that's good right there, brother. I think uh, that's, that's something that uh, we all can learn to apply in our life good stuff all right ken we're gonna close this out please my friend share with the people uh how they can find you where they can follow you at and where they can listen to your phenomenal podcast becoming outlaws yeah becoming outlaws um you can listen anywhere almost any major podcast platform i'm sure there's a couple I've, i'm not on but for the most part uh, almost any podcast platform make sure you subscribe um I do have a, a pretty active little Facebook community. Uh, so if you want to see the podcast, they're on Spotify, YouTube. I'll put them on Facebook. Uh, but if you're more of a car listener than, than any of those, Google or Apple or Spotify's. And I have a becomingoutlaws.com website as well. And I do a blog there, by the way. Um, if you're interested in what other religions believe or cults and things, every now and then I'll I'll just do a whole bio like on some former cult leader or religious leader, and you can find out how they started, who they are. And I don't give any opinion. It's very factual. But then I might tag on a recent episode that had somebody on um, and how they became a Christian. Real good. Ken, this was phenomenal, sir. I thank you for taking time and rocking with us. Gentlemen, listen, don't miss the opportunity to grow yourself. Go find out what Ken McMullen is doing. Go check out the Becoming Outlaws podcast. Um, this guy is full of life. Um, I really enjoy his sincerity, his truth, and transparency. Um, go ahead, connect. Check out the Facebook page as well. This is the Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Roberts. Realize this, that you have everything you need to take your life to the next level. That's because your success is in your hands. Have a phenomenal day with purpose. God bless.